Hi guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> We are currently immersed in the book of 2 Samuel where we are covering chapter by chapter. Today we are going to take a close look at chapter 10 which I will read from the NLT version. Afterwards I will share my mini takeout or rather my main, I don't know if they are main or mini takeaways. So please stay with me until the end and don't forget to recommend the Bible summary to your friends by sharing this link. Alright, are you ready? Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Chapter 10. It says, Sometime after this, King Nahash of Ammonites died, and his son Hanun became king. David said, I'm going to show loyalty to Hanun just as his father, Nahash, was always loyal to me. So David sent ambassadors to express sympathy to Hanun about his father's death. But when the David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, the Ammonite commander said to Hanun, their master, Do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No. David has sent them to spy out the city so that he can come in and conquer it. So Hanun seized David's ambassadors and shaved off half of each man's beard and cut off their robes at the buttocks and sent them back to David in shame. So their buttocks are out in the cold and they've been sent back to David in shame. So when David heard about what had happened, he sent messengers to tell the men, stay at Jericho until your beards grow out, then come back. For they felt deeply shame because of their appearance. When the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David, they sent and hired 20,000 Aramean foot soldiers from the land of beth Rehob and Zoab, 1,000 from the king of Mecca and 12,000 from the land of Tob. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonite troops came out and drew up their battle lines at the entrance of the city gate. And when the, while the Aramites and the Zoabs Sorry, the Aramites from Zohab and Rehob, the man of Tob and Mika, positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on both the front and the rear, he chose some of the Israelites' elite troops and placed them under his personal command to fight the Arameans in the field. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother Abishai, who was, was to attack the Ammonites. If the Aramites are too strong for me, then come over and help me, jo Joab told his brother. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will come and help you. Be courageous. Let's fight bravely for our people and the city of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troop attacked, the Aramites began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Aramites running, they ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. After the battle was over, Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Aramites now realized that they were no match for Israel. So when they regrouped, they were joined by additional Aramean troops summoned by Hadadeza from the other side of the Euphrate River. These troops arrived at Hel Helam under the command of Shabo, Shaboch, the commander of Hadazer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and led the army to Helam. The Amorites, the Arameans, positioned themselves in the battle formation and fought against David. But again, the Arameans fled from the Israelites, and this time David forces killed 7,000 charioteers and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Shaboch, the commander of the army. When all the kings al allied with Hadadaza so that they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to Israel and became their subjects. And after that, the Arameans were afraid to help the Ammonites. And that's the end of that chapter. Wow. The main occurrences in this chapter are the king of Ammon humiliated David's ambassadors. Then they hired the Amaritans, the Amarians for war. 
Joab and his brother Abisai defeated the Arameans and the Ammonites. Then David defeated King Hadadaza and all his allies, surrendered to Israel and became their subjects. Wow, it's hard to explain why these advisors of Hanun said to the to this to their king Ammon. It's possible that they generally suspected David's ambassadors. Or perhaps that they used this way to appear wise and cunning to King Hanan. It is common for liars to suspect other people of lying, isn't it? It is true, it is true. But the thing is, shaving the messenger's beard was a disgraceful insult to the Israelites. In that culture, many men would rather die than have their beards shaved off. This was because a clean shaved face was a mark of a slave and free men wore beards. So free men had beards. Slaves had completely been shaven. So when you shave an Israelite, you're basically calling him a slave. Kwanza now you shave a soldier. Sasa hizo ni vitu gani? Unamwembarrass kabisa. To cut off their garments in the buttocks was also an obvious insult and humiliation. And to insult the ambassador is to insult the king. If you insult David's ambassadors, it's like you're insulting David. It was just as if they had done this to David himself. The same principle is true with the king, our king Jesus, and us, our ambassadors. Jesus reminded his disciples in John chapter 15 verse 18. He says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. I love the way we are not like children without a father in this world. We have a father who loves us, who disciplines us, who is willing and able to defend us when we are humiliated by the world. Because life sometimes where can be humiliating. Life, ooh, life can humiliate you. And living in this world as a Christian, oh my goodness, you can be humiliated out here. It can really be humiliating. Sometimes you can actually look stupid. You can look stupid. For loving Christ, you can look stupid for being a Christian, especially with all these cults and false prophets. The real honest followers of Christ are facing the music as well. To be very honest, in this season and the times that we are living in, being a Christian, you're more condemned than when you're in the world. Like where well, I see Christ, like being a Christian can be a little bit humiliating. I pray that we find encouragement in knowing that we have a father who loves us, who is powerful, who comforts us, who defends us, like the way David went and defended his ambassadors and actually, you know, won and made this everybody. He made everybody his, his, um, his, what, what, what are they being called? Hey, I've forgotten the name. <laughs> He made them their, his subjects and they actually paid a tribute to him because they were his subjects. May we be encouraged in knowing that we have a father who loves us, a father who is powerful, a father who comforts. Because you, you can have a father but he's not powerful. Akima, sasa unaweza kuwa na baba lakini baba hata mwenyewe ajiwezi hana mbele wala nyuma, he's not powerful. He's willing to help you and to defend you, but he's not powerful. He's not able, but we have a father who is willing, who is able, and he's powerful to comfort us, to defend us. And he does not let, he doesn't get tired of defending us. So let us not get tired of going to him with all our humiliating experiences and telling him, Aki God, today, well, let me tell you what happened. Hey, see, I was humiliated. See, I went to a place and people called me a kashev D. See, I went to this way and people refused to give me work because I'm a Christian or whatever. Like you go to God with all your humiliating experiences and be sure, be absolutely sure that God will comfort you, that God will defend you and that you can find grace in your times of need. This is your girl Wakeji Kamore and this has been Reflections by... Okay, just come on, Ray. See you tomorrow.